Hello listeners and viewers and welcome back to yet again another episode of the Beautiful Game podcast. As ever, I'm your host Budge, joined by my faithful co-conspirators Dot and Dej. And the TBG boys are on the road yet again. <laughs> it's been a little while, isn't it? It's been a little while since we've been in lockdown. We've been obviously doing all of our interviews on on Zoom and whatnot. But now we're in a we're in a different space. How are we feeling about today, boys? No, it's been a minute, man. I'm, I'm gas yeah, to be, yeah, yeah. you know, live in the flesh. And um, yeah, big up AIP Studio for for hosting 100%, us today. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Shout out! Just like AIP to Studio. reiterate that, big up. Coach Gerald Lamy for supporting the podcast as well. And, you know, when you're live and direct in person, it really gets the juices flowing. And I can't wait to get, you know, started with this podcast. 100%, man. 100%. Again, say, uh, echoing the same thing that the boys have said, shout out to Coach Gerald Lamy, AIP Studios. Hit them up if you want to record a, a, a podcast and you need a space to do so. They're your guys, man. But, but you know, you know, you know what's mad? I've made sure that my mic is on point. My sound is, you know. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's tidy, man. It's tidy, 100%. Now, obviously, we are um, in very good company. We've got a very well-esteemed guest um, in our midst. And, and to be fair, as you guys will, will obviously well know, usually when we start a podcast... Um, we will have like an intro to speak about the, the special guest that uh, that we have on, a bit of banter, so on and so forth. But I think, you know, on, on occasions you've got to do as the uh, the occasion necessitates and, and sometimes you've got to change the modus operandi, particularly when it comes to the kind of topics that we're going to be discussing on this particular episode. So before we get uh, into the episode and we introduce our special guest, I want to but do a bit of a preamble um, and a bit of a backdrop and, and start off with highlighting uh, three very key facts and stats, which we're going to explore more on this particular episode. Now, to begin with, 1.5 million boys are currently playing organised youth football in England and only 180 will make it as a Premier League professional. That's a success rate in the Premier League of 0.012%. 98% of the 16 to 18 year olds who signed youth scholarships are either released or dropped out of the game by the age of 21 years of age. And last but not least, 96% of those players who reach 18 to 21 and have signed a professional contract are either released or dropped out by the age of 25. Some very, very stark mm. statistics. Now, obviously, like I said, that was the preamble and the backdrop to this particular episode. And we have someone who's lived it, who's experienced it firsthand. We have uh, an ex-Fulham uh, um, uh, Youth Academy player who also played um, in the youth ranks for Wales. Ladies and gentlemen, we are pleased and, and, and privileged to have joined with us today Max Noble, welcome to the platform. Man. Welcome, welcome. Platform. welcome hey, how welcome. am I going to follow that? Jesus, <laughs> what, what an intro. It's going to be a letdown from here on. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, we honestly, we appreciate the fact that you've taken out the time. No, thank you for having me. You know, thanks for coming on. And, and to be fair, you know, our platform is, is all about shedding light onto the areas and aspects of the game that, doesn't, that don't necessarily get enough light shed of on course, them, you know, yeah. that we, we, we strongly believe in that that's part of our, our vision and our purpose as, as a platform. And so when we, you know, heard about the opportunity to, to, to be able to speak to you, we thought, you know what, this is something that we all agree there isn't enough light shed on. And, you know, we, we, we owe it to ourselves as a, as our platform. It's, it's our responsibility to shed light on it and to, you know, to, 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 to cover it to whoever is willing to, to listen and pay attention to it, man. Yeah, of course. Thank you, bro. Thanks for having me, guys. But I think that's the main point is that it's just education, just letting people know, actually, this is what's happening. So football is obviously massively glamorous. There's people that are making millions of pounds. There's people that are becoming super successful from it. But that stat you said at the beginning, 99.9 whatever percent of it, are technically quote unquote failures. Mm. So to have to live your whole life and work and train and give everything you have from probably seven, eight years old to 20 years old, all of a sudden someone pulls the rug from underneath your feet. Where do you go? What do you do? You've got no higher form of education. I don't have GCSEs. 
They give you no internships, no courses, no offerings to go and do a job here or come and work at the club and we'll help you further. It's just one day you feel like you're at the top and ne- you're not, but you feel mm. like as an academy footballer, you're progressing and you're on your right path. And then all of a sudden you're left with nothing. And especially in this day and age, we understand young boys' mental health. And 100%. for me, it's just education and people speaking about it more openly. 100%, 100%. Now, now just for some context, Max, let's... Um, let's let's throw it back a little bit because of course there'll be people that are tuning in who might be in a similar situation and circumstance to what you've gone through um, and and just to really just I guess paint the picture let's let's walk through your journey right yep um, so let's start from the beginning you know you're 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 I'm, I'm assuming you know you're, you're you're growing up and you're playing football outside with friends and people in the area and whatnot before you start bro do you know um, what the truth is I actually didn't Okay. I, I didn't. So I, I think I started playing football with my dad by force. <laughs> <laughs> you will, you will play football. And um, yeah, so long story short, my sister um, used to finish school later than me. So my dad would just pick me up a bit earlier, go to the local park instead of going home back and forth. And then we'd just start kicking ball. And then from there, it just grew. Start to enjoy it as you do. You meet people, you make friends. Like you, that little rivalry that you have with your little mates just grew, grew and grew. I think I was um, just playing for a local team about seven, eight. And then when I was nine, I signed for Wimbledon. I don't know if you remember. Crazy gang. Yeah. You yeah. guys are too young for this. <laughs> no, I remember that. <laughs> but yeah, so that was a, a, a prestigious academy at the time. It's probably like Palace kind yeah, of is now. Yeah, it's yeah. Like a, yeah. They always produce players. So I started there. Um, and then I was there until, well, I was there until 13, because I think 13 was a transition where they, they moved to Milton Keynes. But as a 12 year old, they offer contracts. So it blows my mind That's now, crazy. but it's like at the time. Crazy. So I was under a four year contract at 12 years old. And at, when they offer it to you, you're like, wow, yes, of course I'll take it. Mm. Like they've only offered it to two other boys. So I must be doing really well. And then all of a sudden they've moved. I, I'm from South London. I can't just move to Milton Keynes, yeah. even crazy. though they're expecting you to. Yeah. So I had to, I mean, you have to supposed to go to court and a tribunal and stuff. But luckily, fortunately I had a couple offers to go to a different, few different clubs. And yeah, just went from there. So I signed for Fulham about 14. And I mean, I could go on for hours on this. Yeah. Just, just jump in with <laughs> me, just stop. No, so when you were offered that sort of contract, did you make the decision or was your family Bro, involved? Of course not. My dad, I'm 12. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Realistically, yeah, yeah. the truth is that your parents make these decisions for you. And of course, if I want to be a footballer, my dream is to become a footballer. My dad's dream, my whole family's dream, and they're putting in this much time and effort driving me here, driving me there, hours and hours after school, getting back at half 12 at night sometimes, not doing my homework, traveling, games on a Sunday, training Saturday. They want you to make it. So when someone comes with a piece of paper and says, look, your son's really good, like we can help him progress and get to a level that he won't be able to somewhere else, you're going to jump at it. Of course, yeah. Mm. (sighs) I want to ask you a question about the here and now. Mm. What, what does football mean to you? Because I'm a fan. Mm-hmm. I've never played the game. So when I think of football, I think of passion, yeah. celebration, winning, my team winning trophies, losing. From your perspective, what does football mean to you? Bro, that's a good question. Um, I struggle with that because now I'm, I'm 31. So I'm, I, I feel like I've just got to the point in my life where I, I've kind of got over the damage that football caused me. But there were years, 10 years of my life, all my 20s, I hated it. Mm. I didn't want to be in the same room as people watching it. That's what I do with my dad, watch football. Mm. But I didn't I didn't want to. Because all those questions then start to come like, oh, well, you could have made it or you were better. And it's just that stuff. And it's so traumatizing to mm. have to relive that twice a week or once a week. So that's a story I hear a lot now from boys that have been through something similar. It's like we all just had to distance ourselves from this game that we love, that is full of mm. passion, that is full of pleasure to us or to me it's just pain and trauma but like I said now I'm in a position that I'm a Chelsea fan so how can I not (laughs) (laughs) Champions League final FA Cup final I'll start sweating don't we (laughs) (laughs) yeah so just going back you mentioned your time at Fulham obviously I saw you went on sort of like a press tour you done some work with Sky Mm. and there were some allegations against what happened behind the scenes. Yep. So what sort of stuff was going on? Because I know there was an allegation of racism. They made you take drugs just to get through games or training sessions. So mm-hmm. how sort of graphic were these incidents behind the scenes? Okay, so firstly, I'm not a person 
that's on a vendetta. I'm not here to point fingers. I never go anywhere and say, you did this, you did that, you should pay for this. They should lose their job. They shouldn't have this. I just think what happened to me as I've got older, I realized, wow, like that shouldn't have happened to me. Mm -hmm. And then when I speak to more of my friends and realize shouldn't have happened to them at all. And it's just that cycle of me trying to stop that cycle. Mm -hmm. So again, certain things happened. And as I've got older, I realized that's, that shouldn't have happened to me. That's not acceptable. But when you're in those environments and these toxic masculinity environments where people think, well, if you cry or if you're upset or if you complain, how can you play in front of 40,000 people mm -hmm. on the weekend? Mm -hmm. So what? The coach grabbed you by a throat and in a changing room when you're 16. So what? They gave me injections for four years. So who cares? If you don't want it, then you can get lost. But if you do want it, then you have to do as we tell you. And that's from my experience, football academies, and that's what I would like to change about them. It's not, they're not caring environments. They're not environments where young boys love to go. I mean, each club is different, I'm sure. But in general, it's not an environment where you think, oh, I just want to go and play football with my mates. It's a job from 16. There's a lot of effort, a lot of hard work that goes into it, which everyone accepts. But actually, at the end of it, it's what comes from that hard work. And for me, I would have just liked to be in a stable place, a happy environment mm. mentally and be able to go away from football and say that I didn't make it. But so what? I'm happy. I'm confident. They gave me skills that I never would have gained anywhere else. And they also helped me to move on in my life. But So Max, if you had to paint a picture, the darkest days in academy football for you, what was happening? Again... It's a difficult one because at the time you don't see it as that. Mm. So, I mean, I've had a first team coach throw a football boot at my head in front of everyone. Metal studs cut me in, in the physio room and no one says anything. And I can't, what do I do? I, mm. Of course, naturally I'm a child of screaming at me in front of everyone. I want to cry. But how? I can't. Who do I tell? Who do I complain to? But surely that's why your parents are there. Surely when you're going home, you're telling your Mate. parents, mum, okay. dad. So this is, this is a key to it, key factor. If that happened to you and you went and told your dad, what's your dad going to do? Mm. Your dad who, or my dad anyway, who is a protector naturally, what's he going to do? Mm. He's not going to come in and say, guys, what, what happened here? Mm. He's going to take someone's head off, which as much as I don't want to say, he's, he, he loves me that much that he would do that for me, but that's not helping my football career. I know if I leave this training ground and I say something about someone at the club, all it does is come back around. Mm. There's no HR outside of the club. There's no one I can report this to in terms of just go to the FA. I have to report it at the club. And they're sat opposite each other in their office. And as soon as it comes out, if that jeopardizes my football career by 1%, mm. I'm, I can't take that risk. I put yeah. way too much into this. I can't do it. I and you're it. saying that there was a cluster of obviously black boys at Fulham at the time. Mm. And there was sort of some racial abuse. What sort of abuse was happening at the club? <sighs> Jokes mainly to start with. Mm. And, and, and that's something that I, when you're in those environments, it's, it's, Banter, they call it. Yeah. Whereas actually, it's like, well, what, how, what, how you're saying things, how you make me feel is really uncomfortable. And, mm. and if you're making decisions, then, then based on the fact that you've already said those things, like I might not play. And it might be because I'm not good enough. But when you've just made these jokes and said these things to me, it, it plays on my mind. But obviously, like I said, as a child, it's not the first thing you jump to. You don't think, well, actually, he's racist. Yeah. Or they're being racist to me. Or you just think, oh, it's, it's a decision I'm not happy with. So... So, so what sort of stuff, like just to give context I mean, the instance to I think you're probably referring to is when we were at, um, so as you know, there's a stigma in football of young, young black boys with bad attitudes. Yeah, yeah. Every yeah. single young black hey, boy, it doesn't matter where you're from, you mm -hmm. have a bad attitude. So I was fortunate enough to go to a private school. My best friend, Bradley, hi Bradley, <laughs> he, he, he went to a local school, so we're from completely different backgrounds. My family, we're still really close. My family is close with his family. He's the nicest boy you'll ever meet in your life. But he's from a different environment to me. We speak differently. We dress differently. We, we approach situations differently. But when we're together at football, we've both got bad attitudes. So yeah. that was, I think, maybe the first time I started to think, hmm, this, we're so different. How are we just all of a sudden just thrown into this hat as the same person? Yeah. So, I mean, like going back to it, the incident I think you're referring to is, we obviously would train, come in, have lunch, upstairs in the canteen, go back downstairs, chill for a bit, and then maybe do a gym or a second session in the afternoon. And there was a, probably a two-month period where they said that we can't go upstairs unless we're training with the reserves. So we had to eat sandwiches off the floor. And after maybe the first week, we realised, okay, actually, there's only black boys in the changing room. And all of, I don't want to say 
the non-black boys mm. are out training, out, upstairs eating, being able to enjoy the environment and we're just having to sit here because we've got bad attitudes, because we don't listen, mm. because we don't try hard enough, because we don't want to learn, because we think we know. All of this like rhetoric that yeah. I've now learned as I've got older is racist. Yeah. But it's not outwardly, oh, you're this, you're that, but there is a stigma to it. There are things that say in football, you're raw. You're all power. Yeah, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been training Certain my whole life. I'm not, what just, do you mean yeah. you're raw? Like that's, it's, it's this that I'm just desperate to just cut out of football, especially for these young, vulnerable children that don't understand it. And then the pain that is going to come with that mm. after you're then released is just, to me, unacceptable. Do you know what, Max? The, the question I want to ask you is, just then you mentioned that you, you, you were in a difficult position because you couldn't really speak to your, your dad yeah. And, 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 and of course, you, you know, you were you were thinking and considering all of these things about am I going to play if I say something and, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, unfortunately, you 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 have friends that have committed suicide because mm -hmm. of the mental torment and, and, and the impact that, you know, what they experienced um, in the academies did to them yeah. and, and, and friends that have attempted. And so I wanted to ask if you ever felt like you could speak to your friends about it or or, or, or were, were, were your experiences ever discussed amongst yourselves? Do you know what? Such a good question again, but that's what happens at football clubs. When you're released, I don't want to talk to anyone. Mm. I, I became the biggest recluse. Like I'm quite a social person. I really enjoy speaking to people. I like meeting new people. I didn't want to see anyone mm. because my friends from school who have got jobs or gone traveling or working, moving up in their life, I'm the footballer. Mm. And now I've, failed so i feel like a failure i feel like i've let everyone down my friends that supported me my family that supported me the teachers that said you'll never make it i don't want to be around these people mm. and so even like my friends about football might have had different circumstances might have been through to injury or told that they weren't good enough or moved on to different clubs eventually i've, I've got friends that were at the same club for four years i don't I, I haven't spoke one word to them since and that to me is not an environment that is is safe for children it's not if we're friends when we're at football and then when we leave i can't see you because it brings up too much pain it brings up too much horrific yeah. not horrific but painful memories yeah, yeah. that I'd, i just i'm not ready to accept yet as you get older you learn to accept it you learn to understand it hopefully i've got to a point now where i feel like i've moved on from it but it's very difficult to think okay let me just bring all this trauma up from my past i'm 31 I've got a girlfriend. I, I don't want to be talking about this stuff that happened to me when I was 18, 19. But if I don't, then who is? Yeah. And the cycle just Continue. just continues. Right. So what, what needs to change in football? Because I was listening to a podcast. Um, you Dom listen to podcasts that aren't necessary. <laughs> 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 the only podcast you should listen to. I was listening to another podcast and Dom Vose was saying that football almost gave him PTSD. Bro. That's something I say all the time. You don't have to be in war to, to have post-traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. It's like if this is a situation that mm -hmm. affects you so much, even instances if you're going on trial at clubs, I've heard so many boys say that they, they have panic attacks. It's like it's supposed to be football, it's supposed to be fun, but that pressure that was then put on you, you can't breathe. And then it's just, I mean, I haven't listened to that podcast, but yeah, it's, it's prevalent, it's massively prevalent. And as boys, especially from a certain culture or background, mm. we don't talk about that stuff. We can't say, do you know what? It's I'm, taboo, isn't it? I'm really damaged. Yeah. I'm really yeah. upset by this. I'm really hurt. Like I'm in a lot of pain. I need to speak to someone. I need help. You don't, well, I don't say that because someone in my family will say, oh, come on. Not in a harsh way, but they'll say, yeah, oh, come yeah, on, you're a noble. Yeah. Come on, we can do better. He's like, you'll get through this. You can fight through this. It's like, actually, I'm like I'm in agony here. Mm. Like no one wants to hear because... Oh, so what? You didn't make it as a footballer. So what? Get another job. Mm. I wanted to be a rock star when I was a child and I didn't make it. Mm. That's what you hear. So it's like as trying to formulate an argument, trying to describe to someone how you're feeling when no one can understand and you're so emotionally immature and you're so vulnerable and in so much pain. How can you possibly be able to express how you feel? It, mm. It's not. You can't. Because even me, I used to play for Crystal Palace. I could tell, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I used to be a bad boy a baller. Baller. Yeah. Baller. <laughs> baller. Yeah, so I left at like 15, 16. Yeah. And once I left, there was no correspondence. No, how are you doing? How can we get you back into society? Back yeah. in the day, when obviously you left Fulham, mm -hmm. what was the sort of relationship? Or what mate, was can I just go back to that quickly? So I have so many friends that didn't make it as a scholar and... 
I feel like that's a blessing because you got to do other things. You got to experience life. You got to maybe carry on sick form. You got to go to college. You got to do normal things that children and teenagers do. As soon as you put pen to paper, you can't do. I'm in bed by 8 p.m. I'm up at seven o'clock. I go training. I train twice or three times a day. I come back. I sleep. I do the same thing every single day. If I get a day off, I have to come in and have a nice bath. It's it's so intense that there is no other life that you can have. So, I mean, I left when I was 19. I had double knee surgery, but in the build up to it, I, I had bad knees. So even from a child, I had trouble with my knees. But for two, three years, I was getting injections in both of my knees. And then all of a sudden my contract's running up and everyone knows I need this surgery. But, well, you're not going to play for two. Why are we going to give you another another contract when you're not going to play for two years? Mm-hmm. So they just said, see ya. And then you've d- it didn't register with me that you've done this to me and now I have to go away and deal with it myself. Mm-hmm. And that only has started to really register and compute because, like I said, I just put it all to the back of my mind and thought, I'm going to prove you wrong. Watch. I'm gonna so when you left Fulham, wasn't there any sort of goodwill? Did they say, you know, no, we can help you get another club? Or Do you know what? Was the just truth is, I went, I had. I don't want this to be a whinge fest, but <laughs> I, just so other boys can hear and understand what, what actually goes on. After I left, I went away. I did my surgery, paid for it myself, paid for my rehab, paid for everything, came back and thought, okay, I'll give them a call. One of the guys said, okay, come into the training ground. Bro, they left me in the reception for four hours. And then I was waiting. No one helped. No one came. They sent security to escort me off the ground. That, that to me, is an unacceptable way to treat a really vulnerable, damaged child. Yeah. So, again, I don't want to go into Fulham, this or blah, blah, blah. This is your story. It's just, these are the, this is the ruthlessness mm. of this sport, which is fine if you're an adult, if you're a man. But when you're a child, there needs to be some care involved in it. Of course. And that's, that's all I'm asking for. Really. Do you know what I'm, I'm really uh, keen to understand Lax, because you mentioned that you were basically up at seven, um, training three times a day, um, and then in bed by eight every day and so on and so forth, right? And you also mentioned previously that basically you you couldn't continue doing your GCSEs because you had to go and and commit to like, you know, uh, full time. I've, I've always struggled to understand this, why education and football can't coexist if if it's a level playing field and every single academy and every single footballer is doing the same thing and it's like okay you still do your education full-time but then you're training once a day or whatever like why why can't that be a thing why do you have to train three times a day elite mentality because actually as much as you people don't want to hear it you have to put all your eggs in one basket because if I have a focus here, a focus there, then I can't attain the levels that I need to attain. Mm. So naturally, as a footballer myself, if I'm 16, 17 years old and I've just done a double session, I don't want to come in and learn. I'm not going to come and sit in the classroom and say, okay, yeah, I'm happy to be here. I want to do this. Mm. For me, it has to come after. It has to come, okay, boys, you can, you're, you're not, we're not renewing your contract. You can go away for a year or six months or however. Try, if you want to try non-league, if you want to try another team, then we'll help you with that. But once you've decided actually... I can't see a way forward for me mm. then just come back there's no problem there's no shouldn't be taboo to be able to come and show your face here you shouldn't be embarrassed just come back there's a plan in place for us to help you move into whichever field you want to go into because remember how big these clubs are mm. even if you're talking league two clubs they still have more resources than the majority of, of companies in this country so if you're talking premier league clubs then there should be no excuse for them to not take care and look after these boys yeah. <laughs> Don't you think that for I will say sorry to go back actually my, I left school year early because they asked me to mm-hmm. so not usually boys don't not do their GCSEs so GCSEs yeah. will be the minimum that you would right. technically be okay. able to get Well but don't you think football is starting to change where we're seeing players have other interests outside of football we've seen you know Marcus Rashford almost embarrass the government with his campaign for kids so don't you think now that we're seeing more of this at the very elite level, this is now going to trickle down into academy level. I don't think so. But I mean, I agree with you. I mean, if you look at Ronaldinho, these guys, they don't go to bed at seven. Mm. They're down, they smoke. These mm. are the best footballers in the world. You don't have to have everything focused on football. I just think to be able to get to a certain level, especially at a certain age, you need to be able to focus and you need to be able to think, okay, actually, I, don't, I, don't, I can't have these distractions. I just want to become a footballer. I'm going to give my everything and give my all. If it doesn't work, then there's a plan in place. If it does work, then amazing. 
So do you think the governing bodies need to do more? Because Actually, we spoke to Yannick Balassi on our podcast, again, yeah. another player, Premier League, top level. And he was saying, there's no care. No. He's frozen out at Everton. Yeah. He's not getting game time. That's it. Just just rot in the, in the reserves, right, right down the 23s. That's the key question, isn't it? Where does the care from, come from? Because actually, if you leave it down to individual clubs, then why should a boy at Man City get more care than a boy at mm. the book club that's bottom of League Two? Mm. It has to come from the governing body. There has mm. to be certain rules and stipulations in place that you don't have to have an academy, but if you choose to, these are the rules that you have to abide by. Mm. And if you don't, then yeah. they're going to come down on you. Because at the moment, I mean, you could go into the depths of the FA website, the PFA website, Premier League, and you will see something about academy players and how they're supposed to be treated safeguarding of young children when they're at the football clubs but also after they're released but because these aren't audited because no one checks because no one really cares you don't you don't ever hear about it and we've seen recently obviously jeremy whiston from manchester city yeah. obviously he died we believe it was probably by suicide after leaving manchester city and that was recently yeah. obviously you left fulham at 19 11 12 years ago what sort of things do you think need to be put in place to stop this from happening? So if you had like a three or four point plan of action to try and protect these kids from when they leave those professional environments, what would it be? Bro, honestly, I'd love to tell you that, but through my business and what I'm trying to do, actually, it's under wraps. But it's very simple. Very simple. It's just like a couple of steps that, that not just box ticking exercises, but actual steps that just give young boys hope. And that for me is is... I've been working my whole life to a certain point with this hope, with an almost a promise or like a carrot dangled in front of my face. And actually, when you take it away from me, I'm, I feel like I'm at the bottom. So just give me some hope. And if I think, OK, in three years, Jeremy Whiston, God rest his soul. If sometimes I think oh, I should have done this sooner because there are a, a number of other boys that have done this. And it makes me feel incredibly guilty that I didn't speak about this before, mm -hmm. because after I released my film, which I'm sure we'll get into, but in December, bro, I've got 1,500 emails from random boys I've never seen, never met before, That's telling me see, long paragraph stories, pages, and it's like, it's incredibly emotional. But mm. for me, all I wanted it to be at first was literally just a place that someone could come and just speak because I couldn't speak. I didn't know who to speak to. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to say it without making myself sound bitter or upset or whatever. So again, like, just there's very simple solutions for these massive in corporations or associations or businesses to be able to put in place to be able to safeguard and protect these children and just another question you mentioned your time at fulham there was a lot of abuse people throwing football boots are these coaches still involved in the game do you still see them walking the touchline or involved in any capacity yes i say yes i mean i can't go into detail i'm not allowed to say names but yes at what, so, at what, what level? level top like, Premier League. That, that, uh, okay. Um, okay. So uh, I don't know if I can say. Just top, top, the yeah. the top club in this country that you can think of. There's a man that works there that abused all of us. Not not sexually, but physically, mentally, bullied, blackmailed, and for us to be able to build up the courage, like I found out recently, six or seven of the boys brought their parents in to have meetings to complain. And nothing is done. And now, eight, ten years later, this person is at the top mm. of English world football, really. Yeah, we saw, you know, recently the Barry Bennell, obviously, mm. case that went viral and he sort of got punished, you know, years later. Do you think something like that could happen to this individual? <sighs> I don't know, bro, if I'm honest. I really don't know. And again, that's not what I'm here for. Like what happened to me, it was really sad. What happened to all of my friends, it makes my heart bleed. But I want to do this because it should stop happening from now. I'm not after someone to say, oh, we'll go, we'll give you some money and go and shut up or we'll mm. make this go away. It's not going to go away. Mm. It's actually such a, this is football's biggest kept secret. Yeah, the 99.9% .9 of boys that don't make it, where are they? Mm. What happened to them? Yes, okay, Phil Foden, what an amazing footballer, what a great young man, but actually... What's happened to everyone else? Mm. So that's the focus for me. And that's that's what I want to... One question I wanted to ask you, Max, is shortly after you had um, your interview, I think it was with Sky, mm. um, Fulham released a statement basically saying that they're against 
racism, any form of discrimination, so on and so forth. Mm. I wanted to ask how that made you feel. Did, it, did, did you almost feel as though your experiences were being dismissed? Do you know what? It didn't touch me. Okay. I, I'll be honest with you. I've been through so much pain in my 20s that now I, it didn't touch me. For my friends that went through similar things and were there, yes, it, it really hurt them. And I, again, I understand people's positions, especially when it comes to lawyers and stuff. It's yeah. like you can't just admit fault or you can't just say, yeah, oh, well, yeah. sorry about that. So we have to release a statement. But it's like it's a historic. It's like it's 10 years ago. That's not that. That's not historic. Mm -hmm. It's what it's what's still happening now. It's what's still going on. And so that's what I've kind of been away doing. It's like I've been speaking to people, like you mentioned earlier, about the Sheldon Inquiry, boys that were sexually abused in the 70s and 80s at football clubs then obviously the abuse changes and it becomes physical and mental. And I'm sure the boys are going through different stuff now, but the stories I hear, like I said, from thousands of boys, still happens, still the same thing going on. So are these players currently in academies yeah, yeah, yeah. at elite yeah, clubs? Or just been released. Yeah. I so think I, I, what I, I, type of abuse is it? Is it mental, physical that they're sort of... Yeah, the, like I said, they're just not caring environments. It's really harsh, male-dominated environment. So I don't want to... Yeah, get caught up on this word abuse because mm. it's not it's not sexual abuse and that is for me the the worst kind of abuse. But if someone holds you up against your throat in a changing room or if someone throws a boot at your head, that's abuse. Do you know what comes to my mind right now, Max, right? Mm -hmm. Like I, I naturally am a bit of an optimist, right? And and the glass is always half full, as I like to say. Yeah. And I don't want to play down or or dismiss your <laughs> your experiences and what you've gone through. Mm -hmm. But some, like, to, to some extent, I feel like this could potentially be, like, maybe your purpose, you know, ultimately, like, to have experienced these things and to to be the guy that that changes the status quo, that changes the narrative and whatnot. Like, does, does it feel... I mean, you mentioned, like, when your, your film came out, for example, right, you had so many people that were mm -hmm. messaging you and stuff like that. Does, does it feel overwhelming to, to a certain extent like it, does it feel like you're having to battle everything and and try and change the narrative on your own to like yes but the truth is i'm comfortable here mm -hmm. uh, i'll i'm not saying i'll physically fight but this is this is i have to dig my heels in now this yeah. is the place that i've chose to be so i'm here and and of course it's quite traumatic to read some emails that these boys are sending me mm. that are about to kill themselves. Or I'm not a therapist. Like, what do I do with that? Yeah. So therefore, that's what I've used money for my business to do, to pay for people to have therapists or just to refer people because it, it's too prevalent. It's too mm. prevalent in football and it's not, it's just no longer acceptable. But yeah, it's some, in some senses, I feel like it's therapeutic as in like I made a film and I, I blech, that's that's me done yeah, but yeah, then yeah. to actually have to hear all of this stuff over and over again and then replay what happened to me over in my mind and think was it that bad or did he actually grab me like that or or like that type of stuff like yeah. you actually start to doubt yourself because then like you're in this bubble of is it okay is it acceptable like yeah. why is it still going on why did this happen to me am I making excuses am I like all of that stuff that goes on in your mind so mm. sorry I forgot your original question I just, <laughs> I no I, I was just yeah I just think ultimately like in my mind it, just hearing you speak hearing about your experiences and and everything that's that's happened um in in like recent times I just feel like may, maybe that is like ultimately like your purpose is is to to, to do something in this space and, and, and be the pioneer and, and, and you know, do you Thank know what you, I mean? Thank you, bro. I hope I can, but again, I, truth is, I don't want to be. Mm. This shouldn't be happening. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't mm. have to tell this story, but I, it is, and I, and I do, and I will. But thank you. So after you done the press tour and you released your content with Sky, did any club sort of reach out to you and sort of say, you know what? Yeah, listen. I, can't, I can't say though, bro, to be honest. yeah, I, ha I have had quite a few big football clubs come to me and say, look, we actually don't know what to do. So what's your, like, what are your suggestions? What's the mm. solution? So of course I've got solutions. Of course I've got what I think should happen, but I'm trying to get other people's experiences and not just say, oh, this is what Max Noble thinks should happen. Mm. It's like, actually, I don't just need boys that have been through it. I need boys that have made it. I need parents, I need ex-coaches. So that's what we're doing now, just formulating like a document and dossier to hopefully be able to piece together and tell everyone like, this is, this is, everything mm. what are you going to do about it mm. 
obviously we've spoken about you know the dark side of academy football yeah let's do something light bro (laughs) (laughs) just to to throw another hat into it what about the positive side because for every let's say i got to play football bro I, i i can't i got to play football and again, another negative. People think that <laughs> sorry, people think that young footballers are paid well. You're not. You're paid nothing, like four thousand pounds a year. But I got to play football, mm. and for me, that was a dream. And I made incredible friends. And those skills should be incredibly transferable, like teammates, like mm. being able to socialize, meeting new people consistently, like having to figure things out at, like that in your head when you're playing a football match. Those are such transferable skills that if I would have known earlier, I could have gone into so many different things and the boys are so well equipped and that's what I'm just screaming for, that you've trained them all this time to become actually really good people and like nice young men and women, but people, and just help us, just help us to do something. But again, yeah, football, going into a training ground, like all my friends are at school and I get to go in and, and train. Of course, you get to go and watch the games, like all of that stuff that you love football is... is that is what it's about and that's what it should be about. Yeah, so we were talking about your business. So if you could just give us maybe like a breakdown of what you're trying to do, what you're trying to mm. achieve, the vision of your company, Films. where you're at now. Yeah, like, okay. yeah we'd love I'm to hear that. I'm expecting to see documentaries on Netflix now no, after, right, after, right. That, after that. that <laughs> you know what? I nearly, I nearly said that. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's, that's what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's coming. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so Certified Sports, All I've ever wanted to do is just challenge different injustices in sport. I've always found it incredibly strange that if an organisation decides something, you can't really challenge them or you can't ask them, like, what's going on? So that's what I've always wanted to do. I never knew how to do it. When I had my first knee surgery, and like I said, I had no internships, no qualifications, no education, no help from the football club. So I was was at Job Centre for two years, just doing nothing, not knowing what to do with my life. And they were handing out leaflets. So I was like, what is this? He said, oh, it's, a, it's an opportunity to work at Burberry. So I thought it was just in a shop and I was like, okay, perfect. Let me just go and work and get my head down and just try and get myself out of this hole that I'm in. And I turn up and it's at the head office. So again, I did, I think six months in the marketing department and then I moved to the product development team and that's all I knew. So therefore, how do I tell this story and take what I now know from fashion and marry it together? So. I've always wanted to make sports where I mean I don't dress up ever apart from for you guys. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the juke is good. But but bro, I just want to wear all black sportswear. That's all I've ever wanted to do. Mm. So that's what I did, that's what I made. So we've got a new season, new collection coming. It's called season 21-22 because I want to marry it in line with the new football seasons. Mm. Um or again, all black sportswear made out of recycled plastic bottles collected from the ocean, which I think Sick. is another massive point. Sick. And yeah, all I want to do is every collection that I release, I just, I, I'll, I'll create a film, um, explain, express what the issues are. You can go to my website. I've got a new tab now that says report on injustice. So if you feel like you play hockey and something's going on, if there's, if I get 15, 16 hockey players that are telling the same story, then I'll investigate. We'll make a film about it and we'll try and bring some light and shed some light on it and also challenge. For me, it's not just about talking. I'm not a talker. I, I want to be a doer. You might not see me speak often, especially on socials, but when I speak, not me, but when the business speaks, there's something to say, there's something behind it. So there's stuff, there's big stuff coming in. Like I said, I'm not here to just talk about what happens to these young boys. I, I will affect real change within, within that sport. But yeah, it's, stuff, it's fun, it's enjoyable. Sometimes I wake up and want to pull my hair out and think, oh God, <laughs> just, I don't, why don't I just work for someone? This business is too much. But yeah, other times I just love it. And again, it's, it gives the freedom that football gives. It's yeah. like, okay, well, actually, it's kind of on my term, my hours, and if I put work in and I see the results, and if I choose not to, if I don't feel great one day, then so be it. But yeah, that's it, mate. I'll send you some stuff, guys. No, nah, I definitely no. would love, I would love to get, yeah. not for free. But, yeah. <laughs> no, but honestly, like, even even just the, the, the setup, the, 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 the way the page looks and stuff, it's like high quality stuff, man. Thank you, and, man. and honestly, the film, I was just like, this is crazy, man. This what did you so actually, good. when you watched it, what, what were your first thoughts? I was just in shock when 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 I basically was 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 seeing some of the stats and stuff. I was just like, "This is crazy!" Like a, a lot of people don't know about this stuff because I'm a football fan, right? Yeah. And I and I would say I'm I consume a lot of football content. Mm-hmm. I read a lot of articles, 
I'm always in tune with things, but even those stats, I, I hadn't been privy to. So I can only imagine, like in terms of the wider public and stuff, how, how little they will know about this kind yeah, of stuff. I agree. You know? I agree. But yeah, I mean, that film, mate, for nearly... It was so well produced, though. Thank it you, was really, really, really good, really man. That. Really, Thank really you. good quality. Thank you, mate. So yeah, Max, what I wanted um, to ask you, go, are you happy me. right now with your life? Because we've gone across, you know, the years of abuse sort of like mental turmoil that you were going through that we probably didn't touch on enough. Mm. But now where we stand, are you happy with your life? Oh, yes, in myself. Mm. I finally just got to a stage where I don't, I'm not anxious in my mind 24 seven thinking what am I gonna blah, 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 all that stuff that goes on in your head. Can I do this, can I do that? I'm just in a position where I'm comfortable. I like working hard. I'm so happy to work next 10, 15 years to make my business a success. So on that side of things, yes, I, I'd say I'm finally happy. And in terms of watching the game, do you watch with resentment or you watch as a no, fan? I love it, mate. Chelsea <laughs> in there. <laughs> 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 hey, don't get me started on Chelsea. We'll literally be here for the next four hours, mate. <laughs> Max, the final question that I wanted to ask you yep. is again, harping back to the fact that we will have people listening and tuning into this who are young players, who are in academies or who are in the football pyramid and who may be going through some of what you went through. So what would your final word to those people be, those people that are being impacted um, and, and suffering in terms of their mental health and, and, and going through experiences that, you know, aren't necessarily pleasant? What, what would your advice be to those people? Um, that's a really difficult question because I growing up had people say to me, oh, it's only football. You've got loads of other good things going on in your life. And and I'm, you think, well, why am I feeling like this in my head then? So I can't say to someone, oh, it gets better. Mm. Or just take your time and things work out. I can say I'm, I'm trying my hardest to change this for you. And if you need someone to talk to, you can talk to me. I'm here. I'm sure there's a lot of people that would want to listen to you. You just have to speak. And if you feel sad and you want to cry, cry. If you feel depressed one day, then let people know your emotions. If you want to go for a walk and you don't feel great, then then do that. If you want to scream in your pillow, scream in your pillow, bro. Mm. But don't hold it in and don't pretend that you're fine and let everyone from the outside think, oh, he's fine. He's fine. He'll get on, we will move on. Because actually that's a really unhealthy place to be. Mm. Yeah. Final question from me is, from the conversations that you had with these big football clubs, Mate, you I thought he was going to ask about my haircut, to be honest. I thought that would be <laughs> Spent £45 on a haircut mate, for this emergency podcast. Yeah, we'll get on to that. We'll get on to that. No, I'm joking. But from the conversations that you had with these big football establishments, do you think that it's lip service or do you think they actually want to help? I'll be honest. It, if it could be, it would be lip service, yes. But again, I'm not here for that. So there will be changes made and there are being changes made in the background. Of course, people want to do it slowly and at their pace because they think, oh, well, we're an organisation, we're an association, we can do it, but just highlighting it enough and talking about this issue enough, especially the care of children, safeguarding of children in and out of football, they can't, they can't. So that's what I'm hopefully going to do. 100% man, but yeah, we've we've obviously had a great time, we've enjoyed it. I'm sure everyone who's listened in um, or who's watched it will, in, will enjoy it as well. We're going to call it a day there. Thank you very much to all of you guys that have tuned in, that have viewed it, that have listened. A reminder, if you're not yet following us on Twitter, it's at podcast underscore TBG. On Instagram, at pod underscore TBG. And you can watch all of our video interviews and content on YouTube uh, via The Beautiful Game. And also um, listen to all of our audio podcasts on Spotify. Um, Max, I don't know if you wanted to plug any of your no. socials. Or, no, nothing no, no, like that. No. no, just you guys. Okay, cool, no, man. No. Appreciate it, man. We're gonna we're gonna leave it there, guys. Anything else to add? Anything? I've, I I've think missed? comment below. Do academy clubs need to do more? Let's, do you know what I will say? Actually, anyone that needs help, please. Again, I'm not just here to say this. Like, please message me. I do it. I genuinely go above and beyond and do everything I can to try and help people that, that need help. So don't don't yeah. feel nervous or don't be scared or don't. Again, I'll read your whole email. I'll respond to a whole email. I'll call you. I'll email you. I'll refer you to someone. Just please don't go through this by yourself. Just just let me help you, please. 100%. Well said, man. That's it. We, we, we leave it there, man. Cheers, lads. Up the chels. <laughs> <laughs> Over and out, man. Until the next one. Peace.